Welcome to the Shakedown Sound series. In this series, we're going to share with you envelope filters by some of our favorite manufacturers. Join us on this long, strange trip. All right, today that shakedown sound is being brought to you by the Microtron 4 from Mutron. Very popular, probably famous brand. Yeah. For this effect. Right. These are the guys that started the whole thing. Right. So if you start diving into the history, and one of the things we haven't really covered in right. this series that we don't get into too much is the history of an effect. So we haven't gotten into the history of the envelope filter. But if you did, it starts with this. this is Mike Beagle, I believe. And I'm going to feel really stupid when I'm editing this if I'm wrong. I'm just nodding my head going, yes. Because um, <laughs> that's the name that's popping to mind. Right. Uh, started Neutron. They built the first envelope filter. They had some other things like some phasers and some octa dividers and things like that that are very popular as well. Uh, you can still get use the big, you know, it was pretty massive, mm -hmm. the first one. Um, there's some great videos out there about like interviews with him and the history of that that you definitely should check out if you're into that. Um, he apparently left where Mutron stopped. He actually went to work for Electro Harmonix. So he has his hands in a lot of when we get to like the Qtron Plus and some of the Qtrons that EHX put out, mm -hmm. he had his hand in those too. So there's like a whole history wrapped around him in this effect. And um, this would be, you know, segue time. You know, when we get into the sounds from the Dudon man, he used the Mutron. He used an original Mutron. Right. So this would be, I would say, as close as you can get on the new market to what he was using. Right. Built by, designed by the guy that designed the original. And not have to donate a kidney or mortgage your house. Right. <laughs> right. So um, shout out to Mutron for helping us out with this mm -hmm. um, and getting this out here so we could get her on the show. When we talked about doing... The series, my immediate response was, well, we can't do it if we don't have right. you know, the new Mutron on the show. So Here it is. Um, thankfully, we were able to do that. So, I think that covers that. More than we planned. That was unscripted. Like the rest of it is scripted, but that was unscripted. <laughs> so, if we dive into it, it sounds from the Dudon Man. Yeah. Um, every time, every envelope filter we're doing, we're, we try and dial it in to get that a little bit. So this one sounds like. up there i should go back and replay it but messing up makes it my own right it's like a copyright <laughs> strike it's it's like a lightning rod it right. fires off over there so i must brag on my partner here for a second like we always try to do sounds for the doodah man right and he mm. takes all the pedals and he gets it to where he thinks it is and we had to look up something and so i have to confess we got the instructions out 
throw away the man card right there, right? But when yeah. we got the instructions well, that's out, what they're paying us to do. <laughs> I see. <laughs> right. by, by there, you, yeah. the, the viewers, paying us. Yeah, you get what you pay for. Yeah. Uh, so, but we realized, and some other manufacturers have done this, where they give like sound samples of different settings. Mm -hmm. Well, the very first picture is of Jerry G, whoever that might be. Uh, Jerry G, and when we looked at the Beard's settings, they were just pretty much spot on uh, before we even saw what they mm -hmm. were supposed to be. But because we had them out, we noticed yes. there's three other settings, one specific to bass, and we're not going to be slapping the bass. So we're going to go <laughs> maybe show you the other uh, <laughs> show you the other two um, settings because we can. So next would be downtime, which is pretty close. They're pumping the level up a little bit, taking the peak. And doing the gain up pretty high. And know. the toggles are a little different, I think. I think one toggle... Oh, my gosh. I'm going to put my glasses on. I think the toggles are split. I think the range is over here. I think it's like that. You think? <laughs> As I... Yeah, this, this is turning. So let's, let's see what that sounds like. Um... Well, no, no, because here's what we have to do. That. Oh, okay. Electric mud. So that's cool. That's uh, downtime. What's the uh, the other the other one? The other the, one is a uh, funky clav. So we're gonna go here, and here, and here, and here, and here, and there. So funky clav. <laughs> I wonder if we push the level on that just a little bit. All right. I mean, that it does. I feel like we should be playing Superstition or something. Like we should be. It's funky right. as some old gym socks, that's for sure. Um, right. Or the beginning of Chips or Ponch and John are cruising down there. So, and, we, and we've said it before. If they're going to give us some sample settings, we're yeah, going to check them out. So let's explain why those things sounded different by getting into the features of this pedal. Features, we have a range switch. We have a mode switch. We have a level, a peak, a gain. We have an effect on and off. And we have an up and down switch. Which I am just totally frustrated by this. <laughs> frustrated by this up and down thing. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, we'll talk about my severe frustration with that. There's also a CV. There, well, there's an in and out on the back, and then there's a CV in and a CV out. So it's control voltage in and out. So you can plug an expression pedal into the control voltage, um, and then if you wanted to, you could go on the control voltage out and run that to another pedal. So like if you had their biphaser or whatever it is, you could. Use your expression pedal and go through these and be controlling both is my my understanding. Uh, it says they recommend, I think it was a 10, um, 10K linear pot, which I'm not sure that's what our expression pedal is. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's not. Right. But we can we'll, we can give you a hint of what that sounds like, even though we don't have the recommended one. Um, so we're just going to throw that out right now. Uh, so let's see. Level, pretty self-explanatory. That's your overall volume. Peak controls the filter audio response from a very weak to a very strong signal. Gain controls the envelope of the filter audio drive. The range toggle switch, and this is the reason I had the direction, so I always mm -hmm. struggle with this. Uh, low sets the filter sweep to a low range for most rhythm guitar, bass guitar, and lower fret uses. So if you're on the lower side, maybe the low range. 
the uh, high sets the filter sweep to a higher range for accentuating harmonics for the up the neck or solo work. So, um, what else do we need to talk about? The modes. There's three modes. This is a low pass, band pass, high pass. It has all three of those. Low pass. So fit. Imagine where your peak knob is set. Low pass will let anything from where it's set and below go through. Let the lows pass through. High pass will let anything from where that peak knob is set and above. So that's why when you went to the clav sound and you mm -hmm. clicked it over to high pass, at first it was like there was like nothing there. Yeah. We had to goose that that level a little bit because we're only letting those highs squeak through. Uh, band pass is like your more of like what a watt pedal would be. Wherever your peak knob is, it's going to just give you a little bit on either side of that and then pass everything beyond that. So you're cutting lows and highs out around that. Uh, so we did what? Low pass, band pass. We did all that. Did peak level gain. I think that's it. Except for the up-down foot switch. It's going to be a therapy session. There's going to be a therapy session. <laughs> the guys, yeah. Um, and this has nothing to do with Mutron. This has to do with experience and looking at other pedals and trying to figure out if up is up and down is down or up right. is down and down is up. Up produces a more familiar auto wah sound like a heel to toe sweep. Ah, heel to toe, up, you're moving the thing up. Down produces a down swoop like a toe to heel. So it starts out bright and goes low. Right, because that's the opposite of what we've right. been thinking. Right. And I swear that we've had pedals that are opposite, labeled <laughs> opposite, right? <laughs> we thought we did. Yeah. So those of you that Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> those of you that are following along. It's only taking this. This is like episode six or seven right, to, right. to maybe figure this out. But you know what? This is manual is written by Mutron. Yes. It, so it's been some of the best explanations even I could understand. That and the guy invented it. So Right. Whatever this says is the final word. We just found one of the Dead Sea Scrolls. <laughs> yes. This is the final word. <laughs> yes. On up and down. And we will talk of it no more. Right. I'm going to start with it in low pass on the low range. Let's set everything at 50. Is it worth a reference, Tom? Yeah, I think I so. I just spoke it into existence. Early 2000s, Les Paul Classic, Sir Thornbuckers into a Tyler JT-22. I'm probably going to go middle, give you both pickups. Uh, I think the tuner might be on. So, let's start with low pass. We have it in the low range. Level is about 50. But again, with these pedals so often, like one knob works the other. So I'm going to look at peak and gain together, let you pay your riff there, move peak and gain around, uh, maybe dial in some sounds. And then back to the up-down thing. This switch, if it's not lit up, it's up. It's up, which is the sound that I tend to like. And mm -hmm. then if you press that down, then it's down, and this will stay lit up. And what you'll notice, the harder Pat plays, the more the envelope will trip, the more it trips, the more this will light up. Mm -hmm. Then when we push it down and it stays lit up, as he plays hard, it will go dim. It will do the opposite thing so you know where you're at. So we are going to peak and gain, maybe up and down, low pass filter. Here's pedal. <laughs> Yeah. 
started to get the laser sounds mm-hmm. that i mean there might be somebody who's better at this than we are but for me i really find if you set the peak kind of where you want it and then start moving the game you can get it's easier for me yeah you have to eliminate one variable or you'll just twist knobs and right. be frustrated so like when i dialed that jerry tone in in the beginning and mm-hmm. we checked it with that I mean, I did that. I pulled the, you know, I start with the peak and kind of get the peak where I think it's doing the thing I want it to do. You might have to move the gain a little bit, but then if you roll the gain, you can really kind of dial it into the sound that you want. It seems to work well that way for me. Um, One thing I should point out, if you go out online and look up, I mean, Jerry uses Mutron. So if you're interested in that, we're trying really not to make this up, this series about that. About the Jerry tone, about Jerry. We're talking about the Mutron here. You know, like, again, right. Right. it's not about the Jerry Tone, but you can't kind of ignore that right now. So if you want to really dial this pedal in to the Jerry Tone, you have the recommended settings there. Yeah. But, you know, your amp, your guitar, your pickups, they actually talk about um, using pickups that are like 7 ohms to whatever. If you're going to use active or really hot pickups, they talk about using the OBL right in this that we used on Tiger in the beginning. Right. Um, I guess what I'm saying is if you go out to some of the message boards out there, there's threads and threads on how to get this to kind of get that jury thing going, that the way it reacts. And I know that there's a lot of people that, um, really recommend putting a boost pedal before it. So you're hitting the front end of it a little Mm -hmm. bit harder and not relying all on the level knob. Uh, we're not going to do that in this episode. Maybe someday in the future we'd come back to that, but uh, just know that there's there's a lot. If you're going for that specific tone, a lot more. What else can we do here? Well, we had that was low pass. We can switch this over to high pass. Now, remember, we're letting everything above the peak knob go through. And let's just do the same thing on the high pass. We'll roll those knobs around a little bit. Maybe hit the pew pew sound. <laughs> <laughs> um, again, I'm finding if you get kind of the peak and then, or maybe it's you just, you know, you get the peak, roll the gain to you find where you like it. Right. If you change, then you're rolling the gain again. But it's kind of like you could step. This is the thing that I really always, always struggled with these is like, how, you know, turn this and this change just well. Put the peak somewhere, roll it around, see if you find it. If you don't, move it, roll it around, see if you find it. If you don't, move it, roll it around, see if you find mm-hmm. it. Um, I'm, I'm starting, as we've been going through the series, things change. Like, we didn't know about harmonic trim in the tremolo right, series. Right. We fell in love with it. I'm starting to like the high-pass filter more than I used to. Like, mm-hmm. I'm starting to see that kind of AM quack that right. you can get out of it. Right. I'm starting to see where that might be fun. 
Um, last mode is the bandpass filter. So we're cutting everything above and everything below where the peak knob is. And we'll just kind of run through that just real quick here. Same thing or you want quartz? S same thing. <laughs> So two things we haven't done. We haven't looked at the range switch at all. Mm -hmm. And we haven't looked at the expression pedal. Right. So let's do those two things real quick. Uh, I think to do the range switch, I'm going to go back to like a stock um, tone, which might be very similar to the one we started with. Go to low pass. Let you play a little bit. And when I'm on low, play low, but play a little bit of high notes. And then when we switch to high, play some low and some high notes. Because they said in the manual, the high would be better up the neck. Okay. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. We want to see the difference. I don't, figure it out. Yeah, you have to be like <laughs> low. Right. <laughs> I felt like it took more on the higher note, mm. but you were playing it. You felt like. So I can see that. Mm -hmm. Gives you a little more. Okay. Um, control voltage. It is, um, what are they, a 38 millimeter? It's a jack like this. So what we did is on our, they only have that little bit, on our rattlesnake cable, we got a little adapter. And so I'm going to be honest, it was a cheap Amazon one. <laughs> right. So uh, I'm not sure if, i yell yelling to the mic. See, that doesn't work real well with our cable. Square plugs. If we go to the bandpass filter, I'm going to pull out our Mission Engineering EP1 in red. If we go to that and you play some chords, maybe mm -hmm. we can show that it, mm -hmm. it starts to do. Yeah, so you get the wah wah, but then you also get the the, the filter going wow 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 wow. So, why do it when you just use your mouth? Yeah, so that was our first time trying the the CV. Right, there's a couple other pedals that had it, and until 
You made the Amazon purchase. We always had to wonder. Yeah. There was another pedal that mm-hmm. had a small mm-hmm. input like that. Yeah. So, and it was a couple bucks for that little connection cord. Right. So, with that, what else? I think that's it, right? I believe that is correct. I think we covered it. So, at this this is the point where we like to take a moment and just thank you for watching. Thank you for clicking the subscribe button, hitting the notification bell, clicking like, leaving comments, going out to Facebook or Instagram, interacting with us there. Anytime you interact with the show, it helps us out and it helps us bring more cool, cool gear like this into the series and just into the show. And we appreciate that to no end. And I think with that... I'm PJ on behalf of The Beard, reminding you no matter what you hear, you never have too much gear. Is that the doodah man?